So yes, welcome to this um, uh, class. So yeah, I'm really happy to have you all here today. Um, so I am based in the UK for the last 17 years now, and um, I started doing 3D about seven years ago. So before doing 3D, I was doing other things, uh, music and so on. So I've got a lot of interest, but um, since I was really an early age, I was really fascinated by um, comic books, uh, cartoons, and um, also my grandfather was um, a really talented artist, and uh, so I, I was in a family that is pretty much into uh, art, whether it's music uh, or painting or sculpture and so on. Um, so I will be talking today um, about uh, a topic that we chose uh, with um, Daniel, which is quite different from uh, the previous um, demo that you had. And uh, in the second part of the uh, the presentation, I intend to be doing a, a, a live sculpt, uh, which I really enjoy doing. And um, so I'll be using a base mesh, as opposed to start from a sphere. And the reason why. I do that is because the topology that you get, uh, you get on a base mesh is so much uh, easier to work with and um, it just allows you to get really quick results in, you know, in a matter of an hour. You see it's pretty uh, easy once you, know, you have obviously uh, experimented with it for um, long enough. Um, so I would like to talk about caricature briefly and uh, stylized character creation and the fundamentals that I think are uh, important to remember when you approach these uh, things. Um, so, um, in terms of uh, kind of definition, and um, you know, if we were to talk about you know an actual um, definition for it, so. Usually when people refer to a stylization, uh, they would uh, be obviously talking about a visual depiction that used simplified ways of representing objects or scenes that do not attempt a full, precise and accurate representation of their visual appearance. Um, so that's one way of defining it. But uh, dealing with a lot of students in the past, which I really enjoy doing, um, I also noticed that some people can um, uh, use it um, in, a, in a very subjective manner and uh, it can be used also as an excuse of uh, curtic corners which eventually will result in a poorly executed work and I've been uh, myself you know um, using that as an excuse at the beginning uh, ignoring the fundamentals of anatomy so that's something I think that um, we all kind of uh, need to bear in mind when it comes to uh, uh, stylization and caricature in particular. Um, so the way I define it myself, as you can see on the slide, is that I find that exaggeration of proportion, um, you know, in order to create a comical effect, need to be based on the study of uh, real anatomy. So um, live drawing is something that uh, you should get into if you haven't, uh, you know, until now as character artist. And um, that really un enables you to uh, get a good grasp or a good understanding of the, the structure and the hierarchy behind uh, you know, every successful piece of art. So uh, primary, secondary, and tertiary forms, so I'll talk about these briefly, but the vocabulary that uh, you, know, you establish uh, as you draw is uh, primordial. So yes, the idea is that you need to know the rules before you can break them. And, um, uh, we'll talk about silhouettes as primary forms, for instance, in a, in a later uh, slide. Um, I don't know if you remember seeing the, the film from Spielberg, um, which was an attempt at uh, you know, reproducing a, a, a successful cartoon, uh, a comic book, I should say, uh, into a film. And you know, many people always have this debate whether it's a good thing or not, uh, whether it's been done successfully or not, has it been a failure? Um, and I was always a, a fan of the, the kind of the, the Tintin kind of design uh, and I've got them all and I read them a thousand times and um, when you know when I saw the the, the film I thought that uh, they kind of managed to get the, the, the stylization across 
Um, so it's only on Tintin that you know you can get that kind of uncanny valley, which is a bit you know a bit distracting and a bit weird. But uh, on most of the other characters, they manage to kind of uh, get something like you know the bigger nose or the smaller ears or a longer neck and get some kind of uh, stylized uh, uh, design on hyperlistic textures. And this is something I think that can work. And um, so in order to kind of <coughs> carry on, um, I just wanted to talk a little bit of anatomy because I, this is you know something that really fascinates me. And every time that I uh, study more, um, in order to teach it, um, that I always discover new muscles, which I kind of uh, not ignored, but I kind of uh, um, haven't looked at. Um, so, um, if you study uh, uh, human anatomy, it's kind of easy to um, transpose all your knowledge uh, of the bones and the, the, the muscles across to animals afterwards. So uh, that's why human uh, anatomy should be really kind of your, um, uh, you know, like something that you should be uh, knowledgeable um, about. So something I wanted to uh, remind you as well is that uh, you need to make a big difference between what is reference and what is inspiration. Um, because again, time and time and again, uh, I uh, deal with students um, who kind of tend to think that they are the same thing, and in fact, they they should be understood as a different thing. So, inspiration is very broad. So, you know, let's say if you think about um, uh, a style of game that you like, you know, you're going to just uh, drop a few names, but again, that doesn't give you much reference in order to give you a strong direction to get, you know, to end up with something that is very that is you, that is you know, uh, influenced by uh, different things, but um, reference uh, is way more focused. So let's say if you are looking for um, inspiration, I'd say Pinterest is a great place, and I've, you know, I've got an account and I've, I've got a thousand of, um, of pin on there, and I, you know, I just love it. Uh, but whenever I, I kind of try to get my reference, uh, it, Pinterest is probably not the, the, the place I would uh, find it. So uh, primary reference is the best, you know, whenever you get your own camera and get the, you know, the subject you, you want. So, um, yes, just make sure you make that distinction because, again, that will make uh, people understand that you understand about, about hierarchy, about uh, the terminology that you need to use. And, um, again, because uh, we all love 3D and, you know, we think, okay, it just looks, in, you know, I mean, I get that sometimes. Uh, people saying, oh, it looks better in 3D, but the thing is, uh, in order for it to look great in 3D, you need to have uh, uh, drawn it at least, uh, I mean, at least, uh, you know, once in 2D. So let's say if I'm doing a likeness and I'm, you know, I keep failing and I'm thinking, Jesus, I really can't get that right and it's not gonna, never going to work, then I go back to the draw, good, good old drawing board and this is when, you know, I kind of look. So the next slide is uh, just to show you how you can use reference in order to create something that is original. Um, so that, that piece, uh, the ZBrush art piece there, is not from mine. Um, but basically what's happened is that I found that uh, art on uh, art station, I think it's Rojit Singh, sorry for the pronunciation. Um, but I found it fascinating. And then later on down the line, I was looking for reference for one of my bikes that you're gonna see later on. And I came across uh, Gerard Depardieu, uh, and I found that was just very similar to that art piece that I had seen. So, you know, whether he's seen it or not, I don't know. But he obviously had very similar reference in order to do that. And um, this is something that you need to kind of get into. And generally, when you see something that you find it appealing, you don't necessarily see the artist showing you their reference, and it's like, you know, their private kind of area. Uh, so I'll show you some of mine, but you know, if you get to see the reference that people have used in order to produce uh, their work, then uh, it may, you know, uh, give you some insight on the approach that you should uh, have as well. Um, so yes, Jason Seiler um, is one of my favorite, uh, definitely caricaturist uh, who lives in the U.S. And um, so I based some of my 3D sculpt of uh, some of his design, and. Um, Yes, uh, if you think about you know, so his approach, is, there is a lot of exaggeration. So, you know, in that particular piece here, you can see uh, he picked up on the hair and exaggerated uh, that forward. The ear as well, obviously, uh, and the nose have been exaggerated. So that's something that is quite recurrent. Um, if you think 
um, about something that tends to be quite identical in most uh, caricatures is the distance between um, the eyes. So if that changes, it can actually break the, the likeness and this is where you know you tend not to recognize that person. So you've got to be really careful to which aspect you're looking at, what, what it is that you are going to deform or exaggerate in order to retain that likeness. So you can see Clint Eastwood has always got a big you know, forehead and a very angular zygomatic bone uh, which you can see coming across and Yes, again, it's just reinforcing this, um, you know, these traits. Uh, so again, that's something that I've seen on our station. And uh, I was thinking, Jesus, that looks great. And um, later on down the line, I remembered that I had done a study of Bill Murray. And I made the connection. I thought, you know, this has to be, um, you know, referenced uh, from Bill Murray. I mean, I may be wrong, but the more I look at it, the more I think, yes, well, a lot of the traits are very similar. So, in order for you, let's say, to create your own characters, you need to have good reference, and you know, you could um, find, you know, a picture of someone that you know. It could be, you know, a close relative, but if not, you can get an actor and get your own kind of uh, caricature. So you can see it's not a likeness because he uh, he hasn't got kind of the the same traits, but the the, the skin fold and uh, you know the way kind of um, the proportion are set are quite uh, cartoony because the midpoint uh, on most curly would be uh, you know the eyes and you can see is uh, the eyebrows so that's obviously very caricature but yes characteristics as you know as I mentioned massive forehead big ears round nose etc um, so yeah it's just fascinating you know how you can just create a world just looking at you know the real world and uh, I just didn't want to be too corny but uh, again if you look into uh, what is successful as in terms of character design and uh, even though it was produced you know some of it in the 1920s and 1930s um, uh, strong and clear silhouette is something that uh, or, you know like can be uh, underrated uh, at first but you know this is what you're looking at so whenever I start a sculpt uh, unconsciously or consciously I look at the uh, the negative space and the negative space all it is is basically the silhouette so you're kind of looking, looking at the, the angular shapes and so on and so forth. Uh, and the more contrast, the, the better. And uh, you know, often you know, in the pose you have like the kind of the C shape, make it more dynamic, or the S shape and so on and so forth. So that's used a lot in animation. But um, the appeal as well is something that you need to uh, remember. Because time and time again I can see some, some, you know, some attempts of character design and um, there is a lack of appeal. So even though, let's say, if you look at Alien, which is probably the most, uh, you know, horrific uh, character design out there, or you know, one of them, uh, there is still kind of an appeal uh, behind um, Geiger, who is obviously at the origin of that design. Um, and uh, it's probably the amount of details, but again, the, the silhouette of the Alien is, you know, is quite a standout uh, even back then. And you know, the simplicity again. So. You know whether it's something like which is sci-fi or something extremely cartoony. Well, I'm sure you might be able to tell 99% of the characters, uh, you know, being um, uh, demo shown in that in that uh, image, and that shows you know that there is a lot of uh, thought that's been um, done under the process. So the way I personally um, approach the stylization is that I generally find a um, you know a, an actor. Um, and the reason why I do that is because you can get a lot of reference online, um, which is kind of easy to do, so you don't have to go out with your camera and ask permission to get uh, photographs from people. Although the street is probably the best place for uh, inspiration. I don't know if you, you've you been uh, doing live drawing in, um, in public, uh, but this is when you come across, you know, very, very interesting looks, and you're like, wow, this is like a, a character that I really want to sculpt in 3D. Um, but anyway, um, so yes, generally, as I said, you know, I look for atypical faces and uh, I tend to uh, kind of accentuate features, uh, you know, so nose, uh, jaw, and so make them kind of more angular and so on and so forth. Um, so yes, the, the bottom one is uh, a, uh, a, a, a small, I mean, I would say, uh, yes, not well renowned yet, a politician from Australia who is a fan of uh, Donald Trump. And I always found his look very unusual, and uh, probably gets his uh, inspiration from uh, from him, but, you know, for his haircut. Uh, but yes, I kind of uh, 
exaggerated these here, you know, make them slightly more, uh, you know, coming out and so on and so forth. So, yes, again, I had done another sculpt of him in the past, which you're going to see later on uh, in the slides, and, you know, that one was inspired from a 2D artist, but, uh, yes, again, I exaggerated, you know, all the shapes. Um, and these are more examples that I, uh, I have sculpted, and often I treat these ones, I just studies in forms, um, this is really what fascinates me, how people are uh, so different, even though we are all obviously uh, human. Um, so the top one um, is uh, loosely based on the sculpt from, I think, SPF X Pro, so he's uh, named at least, um, on ArtStation or Instagram. Uh, this one is based off a character design from the BFG from Disney. Uh, this is from uh, CJ Fox Payne, as he's called uh, on Instagram, and they're all kind of uh, you know pretty much 2D design and sometimes work of photographs. So this is a, a picture from I think the 60s and the 70s uh, of the two twins, which have very very uh, unusual look. And uh, um, so yeah, this is what I came out with. And the likeness studies is you know where I kind of learn a lot. So I would really encourage you to do them on a regular basis if you intend to do caricature because if you can nail that person as it is then it's easier to kind of um, get a, kind of a, a, an exaggerated version of them if that makes sense. Um, so yes, here are some more uh, examples. Uh, so you can see there is a little pig here. Um, yes, just you know, a few exaggeration actors and the design that I've done. And I tend to sculpt you know, like every day so I do it kind of uh, religiously. Um, and some days you don't feel like um, sculpting, but um, you know it's time to kind of have a break for one or two days and then get back to it with more strength. So you know I I know the struggle. Inspiration is not something that we feel every day, and that's why doing studies is a, is a good way of not wasting any time and kind of you know really improving your uh, visual kind of um, uh, skills and your observational skills, which are really important. So. Uh, this uh, design here is by um, an artist who is based in uh, in Canada now, uh, Jean-Baptiste Monge. And I just, when I saw the design, I was like, Jesus, I really want to have this in 3D. Uh, and uh, it didn't take me long, I'd say probably one hour or two. Um, and I just worked with a base mesh, I already had the arms and the, you know, like the face, the topology was great. So yeah, it was just a fun little project, which I didn't get to finish, but um, yes, the Jungle Book. Um, and again, just to study um, and more. So I kind of do a lot of them, and then you know, gradually when I look back, I you know, I am more critical towards them. Um, but yes, if you have any questions, then feel feel free to ask them. You know, in regards to the process that I use or not. Um, Okay, um, so just moving on. I've got a uh, biker which I haven't got around finishing uh, and some of the tattoos that you have on it, uh, they're not final. So I think that's not the final version anyway. Um, but again, um, I'm going to show you some of the reference that I've kind of uh, came across. <laughs> yeah. So uh, that's why Google is the greatest, uh, you know, <laughs> at least a uh, source of um, inf uh, inspiration at first. So yes, I, I kind of loved that look and I thought, you know, this is unusual. I haven't seen it in 3D yet, so maybe it's time for me to kind of uh, do the first step. So that was the second reference as well that I found. And uh, yes, the idea was, you know, that was what was good. And I thought, you know, it works well, but I need to have like the bike smaller. So I came up with different version with like a, a longer wheel at the front. That was pretty much final, it's in uh, Marmoset. But uh, yes, I still need a lot of tweaks, uh, the hair and so on. Um, so it's an ongoing project, I, I should call it. Um, so in terms of uh, studying the, the classics as well, um, I had the opportunity to study uh, history of art in Paris, uh, in the Louvre, for a year, and uh, again, that was really fascinating. So I was able to go in the museum uh, on a daily basis and uh, you know, be highly inspired. Um, so the way I style that one is obviously I made you know, a number, number of features slightly more uh, exaggerated, as uh, you can see, and I won't obviously have to tell you which one they are. Um, but yes, the re the hardest part here was anatomically uh, getting that um, uh, fold right. You know, the one that goes uh, into the uh, the uh, humerus bone, 
um, which is the, called the deltoid tuberosity, and um, that is basically the uh, insertion of that muscle here, uh, the pectoralis muscle, and get that right uh, from multiple angles was a bit of a struggle. Um, and working off painting, obviously, it's harder because you only get one angle. Okay, so in terms of working fast, you know, sometimes people ask you, okay, why, you know, I mean, how can you do things uh, so quick? And uh, the, the answer is that I sometimes, excuse me, I sometimes do recycle uh, base meshes. So I had done uh, this, this one, and um, one night I thought, okay, I want to come up with my own design of some sort and recycling something that I had done. So all I did was go back into the subdivision uh, level, you know, zero or one, the lowest uh, I had anyway, and uh, made the um, the neck uh, much longer, very uh, very uh, slim and you know goofy, some like, and then uh, exaggerate the, the moustache and just you know made uh, the, the, the ears slightly uh, more kind of coming outwards. It's still quite symmetrical, so I'll have to work a bit more on the the asymmetry, and that's something that you know uh, ZBrush is. Um, you know, uh, I mean, it can be an issue. Is because you know, rely on symmetry makes something not realistic. So you have to be careful and establish some kind of symmetry. So yeah, this is the most recent one I've done this week. So it took me about a day, uh, or like you know, one morning and then the next day, the afternoon. And it's, again, I really love that uh, character design from Corey Loftis, uh, who works for Disney amongst other. Companies and uh, he's got a number of designs that have been uh, translated into 3D and they've all been really amazing. And I thought, okay, uh, I need to do another one. I have, the other one I did was the monkey with the glasses. Um, so again, there are a few areas that I, that I could have changed and I could, you know, spend another day just tweaking the hands and so on. But um, the, uh, the the hair was a, a bit of a challenge. I'll show you. I've got a quick approach to to do that. But it's just getting the flow right and just making sure it goes in the right direction. And so it needs to be messy, but not too messy. Um, so it's basically an insert brush, a curve brush that I use. Um, okay, so in terms of 3D printing, that's something that I'm getting more and more into, and I, I will get my own printer pretty soon. Um, and that's the beauty of it, is that if uh, you want to kind of uh, get into the collectibles, um, then, you know, there is obviously a big market out there. Um, and uh, 3D printing, uh, home 3D printing at least, is, uh, is becoming easier. So um, the, the process is much simpler than the one that's been described by uh, Bao just before me in terms of uh, production, because you don't need to worry about how clean your topology is, even though obviously it makes the, the, the sculpt uh, look better, but there is no unwrap, there is no shader, no unwrapping and so on. So yes, um, it's just uh, a way of just getting uh, some work done, f you know, in terms of freelance, which is, uh, is which is fun. So I really enjoy doing that, and I've done quite a few uh, freelance uh, projects, uh, you know, after showing that online. So be basically, people get in touch with you, and they want you to do their best friend uh, or you know the person they love the most, and so on and so forth. So yeah, I would really encourage you to get into it if you are uh, curious. So yeah, these are a number of um, design that I've done myself. Um, and this is the study I was going on about earlier on. Um, but yes, essentially I inspired myself from you know existing or dead uh, actors, uh, writers, and so on and so forth. Um, so I think in terms of um, information I wanted to talk about today, this is it. Uh, and I can now move into a um, live demo, so a speed sculpt of some sort. Uh, in ZBrush. Uh, so I've selected uh, three or four designs and um, I haven't made up my mind yet to which one I want to do so I could show you and then you could all tell me which one you want me to sculpt live. So hold on, let's just get out of this. Um, one minute. All right, okay, so ZBrush is here. Okay, so <coughs> I just have a base mesh here. Um, it's going to be a bit tricky because I'm going to have to move. Right. Okay. Um, 
Okay, so right, one second. Uh, so right off the bat, you can see that my interface is uh, different from the one that um, Bao was using earlier on. And the reason why is that is just I tend to kind of, uh, you know, find it easier to work that way. Um, but uh, yes, I do work with the, the standard uh, UI sometimes when, you know, I really have to in front of students because sometimes they may get confused to find, uh, you know, certain functions. But it's pretty much standard. I've got all the brushes that, you know, I tend to use on the right hand side. There is one missing here, uh, which is probably the orb the crack brush, um, which is kind of helpful sometimes. And um, Yes, uh, so you can see I've got Dynamesh and ZBMesh on the side. Dynamesh is something that I rarely use for uh, heads uh, in terms of topology, but I use it for, uh, you know, kind of blocking out, closing, hair, um, and, you know, like several kind of pieces. Uh, so in terms of proportion, I haven't uh, talked much about proportion. Um, so if I hide the, the kind of parts, there you go and I kind of press F. So here is a kind of standard base mesh that I've uh, found online. So you can see this is uh, about eight heads high. And um, most of us, on average, at least I am, uh, seven and a half heads. Uh, so eight heads is uh, just a simplified way of, you know, like kind of keeping the proportions. So the midpoint with the crotch. Uh, so you got you will have four heads, uh, you know, up to here, and then four heads at the bottom. Um, so in terms of stylization, of course, this proportion will have to change. Um, okay, the old lady, I've got it here. I've got it here actually, so I can show you that. Um, so hold on a minute. All right. So if I solo that, you can see. Um, so subdivisions. There you go. So this is how nasty he gets. Um, so you can see I've got uh, some polygroups assigned to the, the, the fingers, which allows me to uh, control shift, um, you know, like uh, hide them and so on and so forth. So obviously the, the topology that I've got on the breast is pretty awful and um, I should have uh, inserted more edges, but I knew I would have the bra to disguise that. So I was able to kind of obviously uh, there we go. So let's have a look. So this is what she looks like. <laughs> but because she's behind the table, you don't see that. There we go. Uh, so let me just unsolo everything so you can see what's going on. There we are. So ZBrush is, you know, obviously a very, very versatile tool, and uh, the reason why I love it so much is because you can use it for so many purposes. So it can be concepting only, or it could be just 3D printing, or you know production for games or VFX. And um, I, yes, I kind of like to use ZBrush as a kind of um, uh, 3D uh, kind of sketching uh, tool. Um, okay, so let me show you the actual design that I've been thinking of. So they are in a folder, so I need to find that one second. Oh, that's bright. Um, so yes, Michael. Um, Okay, Marilyn, so that's more of a, okay. So yeah, there's basically these four designs. Uh, so I don't know which one you like most really, I'm really open. Yeah, Michael Caine? So if you want, you just, you know, put your hands up and we can vote. I just, you know, I'm open to democracy. <laughs> You choose. Put your hands up. So yeah, which one? I mean, who would like uh, Mike to be uh, sculpted today? <laughs> Me. <laughs> okay. Um, Marilyn. Okay, it's fifty-fifty so far. <laughs> that one. Okay, less of her. And yes. Oh wow. Okay. <laughs> that seems like actually everybody wants this one to be done. Um, he died fairly recently, actually, didn't he? Mm. Sadly. Yeah. Um, okay. Um, I think the last one, uh, produced by Carlos Rubio, seems to be the most successful. So I get on with that one. Is that okay? Woo! Yeah. Okay. Cool. Okay. Cool. So let's go back into the bright area. Sorry. <laughs> okay. So I'm just going 
to go back to my base mesh and um, I'm going to um, hide the paths that I don't need. So all I need. Oh, that's the one. Okay, cool. Okay, so I know the reference photo is not very. Uh, uh, you know, like he hasn't got uh, high resolution, but it's enough, at least for me, to get started. Um, okay, so the difficult thing is that you know this is a three-quarter angle, and obviously it's not going to make it easy. But uh, what I tend to do in that particular case is work from the same kind of direction. Um, so I could, you know, in order to have like a similar kind of effect to start with. Uh, store that position in, in space because you know ZBrush is not uh, uh, able to do that like you know you would in Maximilia. So I'll go to Document Z Appling Properties and then press on uh, Custom One, which enab enables me, uh, sorry, to get that back into space whenever I'm, uh, whenever I move it. So you can see my pivot is uh, all over the place. All it is uh, is because I need to click where I need the where I need the pivot to be. So I'm going to click on the nose, and that's it. Now it, it's going to rotate around the nose. Um, right. Okay. So just one second. Okay. So I'd say the most distinctive. Um, God. Um, the most distinctive part will be the uh, the nose. I'd say. So I'm going to get the move topological brush which is that one, so you can access all the brushes, here we go, with the B key, um, and you know, believe me, I don't need all of them, just the basic ones are enough. So, I've got my symmetry set up, you know, transform, activate symmetry, which is kind of handy, and um, I'm going to have to pull off this part, of, you know, down, so using control, I can mask all of this, area and then I'm going to click outside of it and I'm going to unmask this because that's going to go down a lot and all I'm going to do now is just pull it down so again you've got to be careful if this happens you can use the transport tool instead instead there you go so I'm probably going to kind of um, have to do that and obviously you deform the topology and we may have some small issues and have to uh, use zero mesh at some point, but hopefully not. Um, zero mesh can be a bit tricky to use around the the corner of the mouse, uh, the uh, nose, and the eyes. Okay, so once I've done done that, I can clear my my mask. And um, okay, just there we go. So yeah, now it's mask. So I'm just going to smooth the jawline, so you can see I can't scroll because my spotlight projection is enabled. So I just disable it. If you want my interface, you can download it through my Gumroad page. So I'll give you the link uh, again. Um, so I'm just going to draw, you know, grab his jawline and make it kind of go down a bit. Okay, and then I'm just going to smooth that. You can see we don't really see his neck, so we don't really know how wide it is, which can be a bit problematic sometimes. But okay, so. Um, Whenever you start your sculpt, I'd say, I mean, everybody works differently, but some people argue that the best way to nail a likeness is to start with the profile. Uh, the thing is, I don't have a profile view. So uh, one way of doing it would be to go online and look for real reference of, uh, of the actor and find them. Uh, but just, you know, for the time being, I'm just going to go with that. So I'm just going to make his nose much wider um, so you can see it's just it's got this wide area and make the you know the nostril bigger so I just drag this one up this one down and make the tip <coughs> of the nose wider so I'm just using the move topological which gives me a kind of a, a smooth kind of control so the reason why I don't use the straight move brush is because you know it tends to kind of grab everything around it and obviously it's not uh, what I want, so I want more control, that's why I use that a lot. Okay, so at this point in time, um, I'm going to dig in the, uh, uh, you know, you have the zygomatic bone, which is the cheekbone coming out here, and I'm going to dig in here the transition with the nasal labial fold. Okay. And you can see the space of the, the eyes might be a bit different as well. Um, so I tend to work across the mesh. I don't really focus on one area uh, for too long. I kind of rotate and make sure it looks right from any angles as opposed to just one. 
remember it's 3D mesh, so we need to look right eventually from 360 degrees. Okay, so I'm just going to move on to the eyes and um, try to kind of lower these eyelids. Um, so I need to be careful not to grab this. So I'm just going to. Okay. So you will see I'm going to rem remain at this you know, subdivision uh, zero for quite a while because I really want to nail these primary forms that define the character. Um, okay, so just trying to get the eyes to kind of fall down. And again, eyes are, you know, the eyes to the soul as they always say, so it's worth spending quite a lot of time and be patient. Leave them aside for a bit and come back because it's, it's hard to get them right. Okay, so um, another aspect which I think uh, needs more exaggeration is still the nose. It's not long enough, I find. So I'm just going to drag that a bit more and the mouse needs to go down. Okay. So in terms of topology, if I you know, show you Shift F, this is what I've got right now, which um, is not great specifically around here, but you can smooth these transitions with uh, you know, shift and make sure you don't get too much distortion because the more distortion you get, the nastier it is, it gets when you subdivide it. So just make sure your topology is spot on. If it's not, you're just making it, making it harder for yourself. Okay, so you can see I'm just smoothing the, the distance between them. Um, okay, taking that down. Um, so I'm, again, I'm going to dig in a bit more. And the nasal label fold is something I, I shouldn't forget. So I'm just going to grab the clay build-up brush. Um, and generally, I tend to change the embed, which is you know how much uh, form is being created. So you can find that under the brush depth embed. Okay, and it comes with a square alpha, which can be good for you know blocking out certain areas. But I'm going to switch to an alpha six, which is rounder. So, yeah, my topology is not great, but I'm just trying to establish, you know, early on that fold, and I'm going to have to dig in rapidly with the Damon uh, standard brush. So, a minute. And you can see, okay. So, you can see the bottom lip as well is very, very, uh, I mean, it's not inexistent, but it's quite subtle. I'm going to have to make sure that goes back in, not completely, but quite a lot, okay. And then, um, so some form I'm going to have to subdivide in order to, to get them, because I'm, you can see I'm running out of kind of bodies in that way. Um, okay, so before I start subdividing, I just need to make sure I've got everything that I need. And uh, one feature that needs establishing further is, uh, you know, behind uh, just underneath the eyes. So again, yeah, you can see I'm probably running off body, so I might not be able to do much here. Uh, right, so... So fighting topology is something that, you know, it's, it's tricky um, first. Okay. So you need to look what, you know, to what you're doing. Okay, so you can see the top of the head as well needs to be a lot um, thinner. So I'm just going to remove that, and because it's caricature, you can even make it up as you go at the, you know, on the back. So you could make that um, neck a lot um, thinner. You know, we don't really see it, so it's going to be covered by hair, which I'm going to have to sculpt later on. Okay. Okay. So the nose maybe should go down a bit more. So if I get to the point that I think it, you know, it doesn't really kind of, excuse me, it doesn't really look like the actor. This is when I start to do more uh, reference from, you know, the, the real actor as opposed to just a caricature. Um, okay, so yeah, still probably too wide at this point. So again, there's a lot of back and forth. Um, Okay, and we could work on the forehead as well. Um, so all you, all you can see I'm doing right now is pushing and 
pulling vertices uh, with the, the move brush. Uh, okay, so I could dig in here. So, you know, when you know I talk about knowing anatomy, I know where the nasal bone kind of stops, and this is around here, and then rest is cartilage. Uh, so the ear, we won't have to touch them because you know being seen. But you can see the skull here. Um, is protruding and you know the digomatic bone and the jaw bone here as well so make sure you got that established um, okay when you get to a point where you see okay uh, kind of struggling it doesn't look right uh, this is when it you know you're probably going to have to tweak more the shape so I think it should be a bit wider and that should come out a bit more uh, again you could smooth it out a bit for now uh, right okay So I look from you know from different angles, and I you know I tend to look right here to see if that is actually look like it should. Um, so yeah, any angle is very important. Okay. Be careful. Okay. Um, so what I could do is start to overlay uh, my reference. So play with the opacity. If you press Z, you have that well coming out, and. Um, Okay, for opacity, so I could just put it like that and put my mesh underneath and see if it lines up. You could do that from the beginning, but I like to eyeball it at first to see how close I am. Um, so I think, okay, if you were to think, so I tend to align the eyes first and then see, okay, is it kind of okay? Okay, so I'm just going to store that. Um, so in order to clear what I've got, I mean, I could use the custom tool, but I'm just going to clear all. And I'm going to use that custom view. So now, you know, if I move it, I can always come back to it. So you can see my lips are too high up. So I'm just going to pull them down. There we go. Okay. Um, eyes as well don't seem to match, but that's a bit better. Uh, and the chin as well. Okay. So let's have a look. Um, so again, you can see how different it looks now just because of, you know, being closer to the reference. Um, but again, you know, I tend to kind of try to work from all angles and not rely on just the image. Um, so make sure everything is uh, spot on, as it should be. And you can see I've got some kind of asymmetry there already, so I may have um, screwed it up in some ways, but it doesn't matter. Okay, you can see the skin here is going in and it shouldn't, so I'm just going to pull that out again. So be really careful with the eyes, um, you know, the skin that falls around them. And even when you smooth, you can see when you press shift, the intensity is set up to 100, so make sure it's much lower. So you can be, you know, like, more careful with it. Um, right, so I'm still not quite there, am I? But it's getting there. And, you know, the beginning always, you know, like the hardest part. So if you can get past that point and think that, you know, it's going to look good at some point, Never get this discouraged, so just keep keep at it, you know. Um, okay, so I'm just smoothing out the nose. Um, and, okay, let's put the image back and then try to overlay it again to see how, you know, far I am. Right, so... This is when it's important to play with the opacity to see... Um, okay, you can move that wheel aside and you know I'm looking at the negative space there whether I fit so the zygomatic bones seems to align well um, but the rest doesn't so I'm going to have to maybe just rotate it slightly and then get the there you go that brush here and this may have to be wider um, mm -hmm. Right. So sometimes you get stuck, and uh, this is when you kind of need to put the image aside. So like, you just leave it there, and then you kind of start to see, okay, what it is that needs to be doing. Um, this needs to go back in, so my intensity is quite low. Just put it back up, that's it. So facial plane is something I haven't talked about uh, yet, but this is really essentially what I'm trying to establish, which are the primary shapes. So once you have these kind of strong uh, lines, you know, uh, facial planes established, you can move on and make them 
uh, either um, concave or convex. Okay, so you can see his eyes are going down. I mean, the lower eyelid is going down. You can see the skin. Okay, all right. One second. Okay, um, I need to get that right as well. And again, that needs to. Okay, so that's going to be a tricky one. I'm going to have to mask this lid. So um, just use the mask pen. Is that the one? No, that's not the one, sorry. That's the one. Here we go. Um, all right. So you can see that the eyes should really be coming out a lot. Okay. And here as well should be much deeper. So you need to dig in. So I did traditional sculpting when I was about 15 for a year, uh, using stone only, and that told me a lot of things. Um, <laughs> but yes, um, you know, any kind of tr form of traditional sculpting will help you out in the long run. So again, it's worth uh, bearing in mind. Okay, so I've got the nose. I'm gonna have to tweak the nose. Okay, so that should go in and that should go out. Okay, the nostrils could go back in and I need to address that uh, filter from here. Uh, as you can see, I'm doing, again, as I said, you know, everything on the subdivision zero. Because if it doesn't look great at that point, uh, well, I wonder when it will. Uh, because it's not with, you know, 10 million polys that it's, it's going to look better, believe me. Um, right. Okay. So, I think I don't have enough topology. I'm going to start subdividing soon. Uh, and then I can, you know, still go back up, uh, go back down when I need to. Okay, so now it's time to subdivide. So because I hide the rest of my mesh, if I subdivide, I'm going to get triangles. So I've got to be careful with that. Uh, so I'm just going to press Control uh, Shift, and then the mesh is back. So now two things: uh, when you subdivide, you go to geometry, and you can subdivide, you know, traditionally. And the problem with that is that it tends to turn, you know, to turn it into a kind of mashed potato, and you lose a lot of the shape. So um, some people like that, some people don't. Um, I could try to kind of uh, undo this, so I'm just going to go back uh, one step. Yeah, there you go. And uh, remove the smooth modifier and just press it, divide. So it looks like nothing happened, but if you press Shift F, you can see you've got twice the amount of bodies, which will allow us to kind of more control. So you can basically then smooth it manually with the smooth brush. I mean, I know a lot of you probably know that. It's not a secret, but you've got a little bit more control. And so I'm just tapping, and I'm just, you know, giving the the, the amount of smoothing that I want uh, in the place that I want. And you can see I've got, you know, some kind of uh, asymmetry here. So if you ever want to just um, resolve this, you could do the mirror and well, but obviously you've got subdivision already. So I'm going to have to go to deformation and smart resim, which is good. So then it's back to where it should be. Um, okay, so back to the clay buildup and now I'm gonna have to dig in more okay and make this zygomatic mode zygomatic bone sorry you know like stick out a lot more um, and again it's going to be quite helpful as well for that eye here so I'm just gonna dig in first here and then add more mass here um, and again right here as well I need to add more mass. So as you subdivide, you know, it will just become slightly easier to create certain forms. But again, if you can establish them nice and early, that's the best. Okay, you can see the nose is flowing that way. And there you go. Right, okay, so the nasal labia fold. Um, so this is what happens when you have bad topology. You're basically trying to kind of, um, you know, produce some... Um, Kind of sculpt that don't look great, and this is when it gets tricky. So ideally, I would have to retopologize uh, it or kind of find a solution. Because um, no matter how hard you try, if 
your strokes don't follow the, the, the kind of continuation of the loop, it's, it's never going to look right. So, okay, just going back. So I could dig inside a bit more and add more mass around here. Dig in a bit more. And this is where it gets interesting. So you can add all of that mass. There we go. And then all that mass here again. Make that pop out. So you can see gradually we you know building all the forms. Um, so what I see often, you know, with people who start up is just they start subdividing up to six, seven and eight and they're like, oh you know that looks kind of smooth. Let me get started and it's not the best way to do it, uh, believe me. Uh, it's just really hard to you know to have to move thousands of polygons um, than rather than hundreds. Okay, so Okay, uh, so just smoothing that out a bit. Um, okay, so again, very important, always the silhouette. And I feel that there is a negative space here that it goes like a kind of C shape and that is not there. So I need to kind of, um, I can go back to subdiv subdivision one to do that and pull that in place. Make sure you, you're careful with the eyes and you know, you could pull that out a bit more. So if you're having problems, oh god, sorry, Nvidia, um, you can mask this to protect it and then make sure you, this kind of comes out a bit more. So you need to exaggerate and push it more. Okay, and that nasal label fall should come out a lot more. Okay. Um, so, you know, at uh, subdivision um, one, it never looks great, does it? But um, you got more control doing it that way. Um, so that's why subdivision are really important. So don't dismiss them. Um, okay, so that's the kind of hardest part for me now, is the, the nasal label for to get it to look right. So maybe if I do it like that, better. Okay, cool, that's it. So then I can smooth it out slightly, and then I'm gonna work uh, on it on higher subdivs. Okay, so maybe, okay, let's have a look. What else is changing? Um, okay. So the nose, the tip of the nose. And so let's have a look at it from a different angle. Um, so we could push it a bit more. We could smooth that bit at the top. Yeah. And maybe dig inside. So clay build up. Just dig in here. Um, okay, you can see the eyes are a bit dodgy. So make sure it's exactly where it should be all right okay um, so this is when it, it comes handy to change your uh, shader to see what it looks like you know from kind of other uh, scenario there is one i love to use um, that one um, it looks very metallic uh, you may not like it but uh, we can always change afterwards okay so right now i just want to smooth that but again intensity in my smooth you can see it's 17 so it's quite low so be really careful when you smooth because you can destroy a lot of work and it's the point is that you need to kind of be careful. Okay, the top of the nose, I'm going to flatten it, so I'm going to use the trim dynamic. So um, if you want your, your skirt to be quite sharp, just use the trim dynamic in the kind of lower subdivisions and you have like a much sharper edge uh, to your skirt, which, you know, makes it look great. Um, okay, so... I could start blocking uh, because I think you know still so many things I need tweaking and it doesn't look great or oh, it doesn't look like him yet I don't think so I'm just going to build that a bit more build it here and you got the, okay you can dig it a bit more here okay. Do you have any questions? <laughs> if you do, just don't be shy. Okay. Um, right. So I'm just going to try to build that a bit more. And basically, the transition between you know the muscles and the the, the bones is a tricky one. So to get that right is you know half of the battle. Um, Okay, so I see I'm probably going to dig in a bit more under here. And what you can do afterwards is, with the move topology call, I mean, you can mask underneath. 
and then get that skin to kind of come down a little. So you got to be a bit careful when you do that, but yeah. Okay, um, let's have a look. So you can smooth that a bit. Um, okay, so we could start the hair as well. So it's a tricky one. Okay, I'm just going to concentrate on the head again, so control shift. Sorry, so, um, right. Um, I've got some brushes, some uh, insert brushes that I use in order to do the hair, so I'm gonna load them. So before I do that, press nine to save your work. Um, so I'll start, you know, I start subdividing. Um, once I've got my hair then, you know, I just wanna, you know, again, keep it um, kind of gradual and focus on the whole thing rather than just the face because the hair will, you know, determine a lot of the negative space again. Um, and you know probably my forehead is probably a bit around at the top as well like that so it needs to, to be coming forward and so you probably need a transition here uh, right okay and you can smooth the transition there you go okay um so the brushes so if you go to brush you can dock it on the side load brush wow sorry it is like daylight now um right i've got mm, hold on uh, I've got the brushes somewhere. Jesus. Um, mm. Okay, it was on my. Okay, hold on a minute. Um, I install them on the drive, so just give me a minute. Program files 86. Mm. So I've got a few drives here. There you go. Pixelogic. Okay, actually I may know where they are, if not, they should be in my folder, so back to the dark, um, so, uh, this, so brush, test our brushes, there you go. I had installed them, so I didn't need to reload them. So, uh, both I got from ZBrush Central, I think this one is from Decran, but I'm not sure, I can't remember. So I'm just going to click on it now, and then I'm going to just cl click on another brush, let's say the clay, and I'm going to, oh shoot. Um, load the other one, which is uh, the IMM hairbrush. Um, so I can send them to you, otherwise you can get them off uh, the Zebra Central. Okay, so these brushes are quite handy. Um, because I've got subdivision, I won't be able to um, apply them. So what I generally do is that I duplicate my mesh, uh, and uh, on that mesh, which I will delete afterwards, I delete the subdivisions. So what you could do is, you know, make sure you got like the hairline, which is at the middle, and then grab, you know, like the hair. And obviously, it's the wrong direction. Um, the more I look at it, the more I, I see there's so many things that needs to be adjusted now. Uh, right. I think that fold as well is not right. Okay. So yeah, the eyes is definitely a tricky one, as you as you can see. Um, so I could subdivide that, and again, I'm going to smooth it manually to, go, to get more control, make sure the intensity is not too high, just tap in, so when you do it like that, you, you don't, you know, let ZBrush do the, the work for you, don't, you know, and it's more like traditional sculpting then. Uh, when it's, you know, it's not procedural and it's not uniform. Um, okay. So I think the tip of the nose needs to be adjusted. Um, right, okay. So this is when it separates in kind of two parts. There we go. You can see I use a lot of the clay buildup uh, all the time, um, but again, if 
Yeah, that skin should be falling wider. Then I go back into my subdivs. Um, and then I go back up. Okay. Um, So I keep going, and I think the yeah, the zygomatic can be kind of maybe slightly lower. Okay. Um, so you see, likeness is a tricky one, you know, when you obtain it yourself, and it does take time. You know, it takes weeks sometimes uh, to achieve. So caricature, in some ways, they could potentially be easier than you know, like the straight likeness, but not always. Um, because it's really subtle. Um, so that's you know something that, as well, you may have seen. Uh, if you think about uh, twins, whether you know sisters or brother, if they are identical, um, if you look at them, there is something about the way they move and um, interact and so on that makes you feel it's a different person. And even though they look very similar, um, the whole kind of um, expression on their face can be you know very, very uh, personal. Um, so yeah, likeness is, is a tricky one. Uh, right. So just, you know, keep adjusting the, the areas and the nose as well. Okay, you can see that's not a great nose, so I'm just going to dig in. Just with the diamond standard. Okay, and refine all the folds. So yeah, if it gets a bit nasty, you've got to be a bit careful. Make sure you've got enough. Okay, so... <laughs> funny, isn't it? Um, okay. Yeah. So you can change the shader, make it slightly darker. Okay, so have a look. Um, okay, I want to do the... The eyes, uh, sorry, the, the hair next. How are we doing for time? I don't have uh, the time here. We good? I don't want to carry on for another hour if you want. It's 5.12. Sorry? It's 5.12. Yeah, okay. You can do until 5.30-ish. Okay, cool. Okay. Um, right, so... This is when I probably need to overlay it again and then see whether I'm really off or I'm kind of getting close. And sometimes it's all to do with the eyes and you know, you may get everything right, but if you get the eyes wrong, uh, it's just uh, a recipe for disaster. <laughs> it's not good. Okay, so nose seems to align-ish. So Okay, so the nose should go down a bit, the nostrils at least, uh, opacity, yeah, my eyes, they are just too wide, that's probably the main concern, um, and I might be off here as well, okay, this maybe need to be a bit wider, okay, so, um, let's remove the eyeballs for now, and go back to the lowest subdivision um, because again that's where you have the most control so I'm just going to make the eye smaller and that should work um, okay so going back to the eyes All right have some poly paint on here which I'm going to remove and uh, there we go um, Make sure you got the symmetry enabled so you can move them. And often if uh, the eyeballs are actually too big, it's never going to look right. So scale them and then move them about. So I use the transpose. That's it. Okay, and this is when it's time again to go back on that specific. Okay. Lower subdiv. Hmm. Uh, it seems that the move topology coin is playing up. No, it's okay. 
So yeah, um, it's worth spending quite a lot of time around around here. Uh, like. So don't never rush. You know the, the that part. I say the lips, uh, the eyes, really important. Okay. Oh God. Um, what is position mode? I've heard of that before. From the tablet. Is it? Sorry. Yeah. Okay. Um, I don't remember clicking in the first place. <laughs> um, yeah, I'm clicking it. Oh, there you go. Got it, I think. No? There you go, yeah. It's there. Yes, go Okay. Um, right, okay, apologies for this. Um, okay, so the fold again, underneath the eye needs, needs to be kind of flowing right. Um, Okay, so I just want to move on to the uh, hair for now, even though the face needs a lot of uh, adjustment still, and probably will. Um, okay, so if we go back into uh, that mesh, uh, which you remember I kind of blocked out, and I go to the brushes, so um, DylanEkran.com, this is where you could get uh, his brush, um, which is really good, so if, uh, I mean, yeah, we could do that. Okay, let's try that. So if I click on it and I press M, uh, it's an insert multi mesh brush. So you have different brushes to choose from, and they're all pretty cool. Um, you could start with the multi thick A and see what it, what it gives us. Um, okay, if you got any subdivision, which I do here, I've got to have to delete these because we won't be able to use the brush otherwise. So this is what you get. It needs to be the other way around. So I'm going to show you how to tweak the, the actual shape. Okay, so... Um, in order you know, for it to kind of look realistic, we're going to have to use the move brush and put this inside the, the skull kind of thing, because otherwise it's just going to look wrong. Um, in terms of shape, so if you go to stroke, and dock that on the side, you've got curves, um, and you got the curve, there you go, yes, so we definitely want it to snap and uh, the curve modifier, okay, so size, that's good, the fall off I wanted to change, so let me show you if I put that curve here okay, okay, come on uh, I've been temperamental today, wow, okay should be able to drag them out. Hmm. Um, yeah, let's reset that. There you go. Okay, so if you drag this, there you go. Um, so you can see like both ends are a little bit thicker. Uh, so you probably would like this one to be a bit sharper. Okay, so it's not that bad. Uh, maybe not that thick in the middle. Yeah, that's a bit better, maybe. Um, so that, that's the good thing, is that you really can ad adapt it to, you know, what it is that you want to do. Um, so, it's good to customize uh, your tools. Um, okay, so... I have a question. Tell me. Um, you can change the size of the insert mesh with the brush size, right? Yeah. But then also, like, the curve kind of you know, the distance that it makes its steps also changes. Do you know if you can change it like independently somehow? Because it's always you know you want like a really big insert mesh, but then also the curve gets like really rough. I know, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, uh, there is some things here. The curve edit radius, uh, the snap distance, maybe messing around with that could help, but I'm not sure. Um, I, I yes. You do? It's in the curve tab. 
Okay. So in the curve, the curve step. Okay, in the curve step, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. So probably, yeah, modify that value. Um, yeah. That's it, yeah. There you go, yeah. There's always someone out there who knows the answer. And it's not God. Um, okay, so... Right, I'm just going to dock this image on the side because I just want to see what I'm doing. Uh, okay, so I've got... Going back to, you know, the actual kind of uh, hairline, I want it to be kind of quite wide. Not too wide, but... Okay... That's it, okay, cool. So I think we could get this at the start. Um, in terms of volume. Okay. Could rough it up a bit and then see whether you know this is really the kind of direction that I want to go in. Um, so part of it is going to come up on top of it. So it's gonna go into that flow. And the other one is gonna fold underneath. So I'm gonna sub divide that, okay. Doing like that, then it kind of gives you a kind of direction for your curves already, uh, which is kind of handy. So you know where to light them, or you know that kind of. Okay. okay. Right. Okay. Um, so yeah, I should get started. Then I go back into that hairbrush that which I customized and then okay obviously because I've got subdivs I'd subdivide it uh, without remembering and delete that okay there you go I'm just dragging this here and okay that seems to work the tricky part is whenever they kind of clash with each other and that happens, so um, what I do is I basically smooth that, so I just press shift and it smooths out the, you know, the artifacts you get, which is good because you know, the rest is still mask, so it's now or never kind of thing. Um, okay. So it can take a lot of time to do the hair, but I'll show you what I do is basically I tend to duplicate what I do in the sub tools and uh, okay let's have a look it's going to be messy yeah a bit if it is as I said yeah just smooth it um, okay so we could leave this here um, okay so I'm going to solo the hair shift F um, shift uh, control and then shift control again so you can see you've got a different poly groups for each um, so I just want <coughs> one poly group for now so I can separate it so group visible uh, okay and then I'm going to split hidden so the other part is going to be a different sub tool now okay there you go um, so this one I'm going to duplicate it right and unsolo all of this shift F okay and uh, use the move brush this time not the move topological and uh, So we see they should be darker. Um, so I'm going to make them darker. Um, and same thing here as well. Okay. Yeah. So gradually, that's kind of um, the way we do it. So I would duplicate that again, and then put a bit forward as well. So the best thing is to kind of remove the symmetry at this point, because uh, otherwise, you know, everything, especially hair, are never symmetrical. So, I mean, they, yeah, I mean, there are some haircuts that are really symmetrical, but not too. I mean, it shouldn't be too obvious. Um, right. Okay. So that's yes, that's probably the way I would do it. If you have any questions, let me know. Yes. No. <laughs> If you were to like take this to print, like how would you try to clean up the hair? Okay, um, it's a tricky one <laughs> um, because you know if the mesh is not watertight, um, 
you're going to get really, uh, you can potentially get lots of artifacts. So, um, if I was to, I mean, I, you know, you could try to send it to the printer and see how it goes. <laughs> But uh, eventually, I wouldn't dare to kind of give uh, to someone something that is like this, because the, the printer will struggle to fill in these areas. So there is supporting materials, but it may fail. And uh, yeah, I've had some funny uh, sculpts in the past where things don't, you know, like half of the head gets printed, not the other half. And it's just, yeah, it's hilarious, but it's a lot of uh, time and money wasted. <laughs> so I'd say probably. Um, I would just end up sculpting it manually myself, um, you know, directly on the mesh and make sure I've got a really good topology, um, so to subdivide it and, um, you know, yeah, make sure that, you know, I'm using the, uh, I mean, obviously it depends on the type of, of hair that you need, but, um, you know, I would just use the, the clay build-up and the, the dam standard uh, with uh, the sub and the add-on to kind of create this kind of nice effect like these. Um, yeah. So yeah, I probably wouldn't recommend to do that technique for the 3D printing. <laughs> You're welcome. Okay. Um, so sometimes it's kind of good to make the sculpt a little bit darker and then see kind of, okay. Um, Okay, if you want to, I mean, you may know that, but if you want to reset, you know, what you've done, just go to the flat color, MRGB, and uh, then when you apply any material, you will apply the color, uh, what it should do, there you go, that's it, yeah. Um, so, yeah, depending on the shade that you have, you know, you see it kind of pinpoints certain areas that could be uh, further kind of adjusted. Um, so I think there is something here that I would definitely tweak is just that fold. So I'm just going to go back, and that fold is not right. Okay, got to be careful with the corner here. Just mask this. Here we go. Here we are. And I'm going to smooth this because you know there is not such thing as a fold there. It's kind of coming forward. There we go. So yes. The more you look at the reference, the more you kind of going to end up seeing, oh, things don't match, and you know this is eventually the, the iteration process. Um, and the next day is always, you know, the best way to kind of go back onto a mesh because so many things come to light. Um, but again, yeah, need to have a hard edge there. So it still does look a bit rough, but I don't want to over subdivide it at some point, so I could, um, you know, control D, actually. At this, at this point in time, I can re-enable the uh, smooth modifier um, without it, you know, to affect the mesh too much. Um, so the nose, I would probably refine that nostril a bit more, so... Um, go back to a round alpha. Subdivision three. Yeah, it's, it's tricky. Um, it's just down to topology. If you don't have it set up properly, it just gets really nasty. Again, this could be wider, depends on the reference. We can't really see from the angle, which is a bit uh, confusing. Um, there you go, come on. There you go. Oh, yes. There you go. That happens. Um, okay, so I think what I'd say, yeah. Um, to be a bit wider. And yeah, and look at your profile because it's you know it's really important. Okay. So do you have any questions or anything? How long have you been doing digital sculpting? 
Um, so on a daily basis, I've kind of started to get into it um, in 2013 or 2012. Um, this is when Dynamesh came about, and I thought, you know, it's just kind of a lifesaver, and it's just, you know, the, the best thing that has a, ever happened. But, you know, eventually, I, you know, I try not to use it at all, just because of the topology issues. So, I, you know, I work from base mesh to start with. But yeah, it's, you know, I, I kind of do it on a daily basis. I try to, uh, and you know, yeah, just a lot of practice. But yes, studies are the best, you know, because. You know, if you try to kind of make it up as you go and make up your own design, it's fun. You know, you're going to enjoy that. But eventually, after months, you're going to re kind of reproduce the same kind of shapes that you already know how to, to do. You know, like if, if you don't have enough inspiration or kind of reference around you, you kind of keep on redoing the same thing. Or it kind of looks the same. And you're not going really anywhere with it. So think about, you know, the masters and, you know, how much reference they've, uh, they've kind of uh, been through. I mean, Leonardo da Vinci and the sketchbooks is the perfect example, you know, knowing the anatomy inside and out. Um, and yeah, I think the more you study anatomy, the more you're likely to kind of uh, to, you know, to succeed as long as you practice it. Um, okay, so the leap as well needs to go. Yes, yeah, sorry. Time, okay. Okay, so um, yeah, I've got um, a gum road where I've got quite a few tutorials on there. I've been teaching online uh, as well this summer, and uh, so I recorded all the lessons, so they're all available. It's a 10-week course, and I'm going to do it next year as well. So, if you ever want to kind of uh, learn more about anatomy and character in general, then I'll be really happy to uh, help you out. Uh, so it doesn't necessarily need to be caricature. You know, that's just one aspect of uh, of you know the the concept process. Okay. So thank you so much. <laughs>